Dr. Jason Saunders here, and we're gonna continue with the theme of answering the questions that I get all the time. So the next question is, does hyperbaric oxygen actually affect or improve athletic performance? And the short answer is yes, but really to understand that, let's go a little bit deeper and understand why does hyperbaric help or how does hyperbaric help improve athletic performance? So there's a few different ways. Number one, we have to understand what athletic performance is about and what are the changes that happen to our body as we are competing, whether that's you know even mental performance or you know physical performance. As soon as we start requiring uh, more activity, the body starts to shunt blood to the working tissue. In other words, if I'm running, my body will start to shunt more blood to my legs. Why? Two reasons. One, to get more nutrients and more oxygen to the working tissue. And two, to get the waste products of that work away from the tissue. And as long as we can improve circulation and nourish and feed the tissue that needs it and get rid of those waste products, we can massively improve the performance of that tissue. And again, that's true of brain performance as well as physical performance. And so really what this is about is it's about delivering oxygen and getting rid of waste. And so as we uh, go into a hyperbaric chamber, we already know that we're going to be driving a much deeper uh, and, and much larger quantity of oxygen into the tissue. If you have any questions about how hyperbaric works or why hyperbaric works in general, please see the videos that we did earlier on the mechanisms of hyperbaric as well as the mitochondrial benefits of hyperbaric oxygen. So we know that in athletic performance, athletes are always looking for that edge. And unfortunately, athletes who know that they really are trying to find that competitive edge might turn to other methods of getting that. And blood doping is one of those. What is blood doping? There's a few different ways to do it, but on the surface, blood doping is really about increasing red blood cell count. Because if we can increase red blood cell count, that means we have more oxygen carrying capacity. And if we have higher oxygen carrying capacity, that means we can deliver more oxygen to the working tissue. And so blood doping is, is really all about oxygen. And the way we've created that in terms of athletic performance is really looking at, well, we require red blood cells in order to extract oxygen and, and hold on to oxygen that we breathe in. The red blood cells then hold that oxygen until it gets to the working tissue, where it can now release the oxygen to the working tissue, improving its capacity to uh, continue to work. And so athletes do find tremendous benefit when blood doping in terms of their athletic performance. Hyperbaric oxygen is not blood doping. I want to be crystal clear about that. Not only is it not blood doping, it has no real effect on red blood cell number. But what does it do? It bypasses red blood cell carrying capacity altogether. It allows us to drive much more oxygen actually into the plasma of the blood, the liquid portion of the blood, making the plasma an actual carrying device, if you will, for oxygen to get to that working tissue as well. And so when you're inside that chamber and you're driving oxygen because of pressure, increasing the amount of oxygen in that plasma, as long as you're in that chamber, that oxygen has the capacity to stay inside the plasma, the liquid portion of the blood. And as long as it does that, it's circulating through your system and it's free floating, allowing it to get into working tissue or organs or you know brain tissue, nervous system tissue, anything that requires an increased level of oxygen. When you get out of the chamber, that oxygen does start coming out of your system. However, as it starts coming out, it's not inert. It's actually very useful. And as it's coming out, it's actually interacting with all of your cells and your tissues, further nourishing them and delivering that oxygen for the cells to be able to, again, increase their capacity to work. If you find these videos helpful, please click the like button, please subscribe to the channel. We are on a mission of really trying to get this information out to the public so people can fully understand the benefits of using hyperbaric oxygen and other modalities to improve their health, to deal with whatever health concerns or issues they may have in their life, also to just prevent other health issues or health crises to really help meet people's health goals. And so by clicking a like button, by subscribing to the channel, it helps people find our information and we really appreciate that. While I will say that you can use hyperbaric, let's say before an event, and you should be able to expect some increased capacity to work during that event, I'd also argue that the most important benefit of hyperbaric from an athletic performance standpoint is actually on the other side the recovery side. What we could say about most uh, athletes, especially elite athletes, is there's a tendency to 
find that edge of overtraining. And sometimes overtraining means that you're actually training and working too hard. But a lot of times overtraining is just an imbalance between how hard someone's training and how well they are recovering. And if we can improve their recovery in between training bouts or improve their recovery in between games or events, now we can really start to improve performance. And so while yes, I do think there's a direct effect of driving more oxygen into the system and allowing for an increase in performance, let's say of that day, I would also say that on the long-term use of hyperbaric and specifically creating hyperbaric protocols around the recovery phases, for that athlete, you are gonna see much greater increases in performance because as a result of improving recovery, you're automatically gonna be more prepared for that next training bout or that next event or that next game. To me, it's really the long-term use of hyperbaric in between that creates a much greater benefit for an athletic performance than the actual use pre-event from an athletic performance. Although both I'm sure would work great. I'm also gonna link a study that was done. And this study that was done was really looking at just because you're getting increased oxygen, does that mean you're really increasing the capacity to work? In other words, if your body needed more oxygen, wouldn't it just bring it in? Why do we need this tool to deliver more oxygen? And just because I'm saying that you can drive more oxygen into the cells, that doesn't mean your body's gonna use it if it doesn't need it right? So this was a study looking at how does the increased oxygen affect mental or cognitive performance? How does that increased oxygen affect physical performance? And most importantly, how does that oxygen affect dual tasking? In other words, if we ask somebody to do a cognitive task pre and post hyperbaric, does that task improve? If we ask somebody to do a physical task pre and post hyperbaric, does their physical task improve in terms of capacity for work? And if we do something even more complex, doing a cognitive assessment while also doing a physical assessment, can we see that dual tasking also improves? And the link to the study below shows all of the above. It shows that the cognitive performance went up. It shows that the physical performance went up as well as the dual tasking. And so, yes, if we do drive more oxygen into the body, if we can drive this free floating oxygen into the plasma and deliver it effectively throughout the whole body, can we expect an improvement in performance? Absolutely, yes, we can. So please take a look at that study below and uh, see you next time for the next video.